Hey guys, how are you doing? Uh, so today we're going to be talking about habitus and the psychosocial and for that I built this little classroom so that we can go and have a nice little discussion about this paper that I've been reading for a course of mine and let's get started. So first let's just go into this little classroom and grab the book. I already have it so without further ado let's get started so the reading that I'm gonna be discussing with you guys and basically the paper is by Diane Ray and it's called Habitus and the Psychosocial Bordeaux with Feelings so in this reading we're gonna be talking about Pierre Bourdieu and his concept of habitus and is there any relevance or relationship between habitus and the psychosocial and should they be studied in conjunction with one another so who was Pierre Bourdieu he was a French sociologist and he had a lot of contributions in terms of academia with regards to the field of sociology and other than that he had uh, he had one concept which was very crucial which has a lot of publications in all other fields of academia as well which was habitus now what is habitus it basically comprises socially ingrained habits skills and dispositions it is the way that individuals perceive the social world around them and react to it so everyone can have a different form of habitus and it develops differently from people from different cultural, religious, social and ethnic groups. And that's the concept of habitus by Pierre Bourdieu. Now according to this paper, let's get down to it. Sociology and psychoanalysis should unite their strengths, but to do so they would need to overcome their prejudices against each other, to analyze the genesis of investment in a field of social relations. This is what Bourdieu wrote. And this is really true because historically, from an academic point of view, we've had a lot of uh, we, a lot of disagreements between the field of sociology and psychology with regards to being a hard science or a social science. But Bourdieu argues that we can use these uh, concepts from sociology and psychoanalysis to unite their strengths. Despite the uneasy relationship Bourdieu had with both psychology and psychoanalysis and his refusal to recognize the ways in which both disciplines inform his concepts, in particular those of habitus, misrecognition and symbolic violence. A close reading of his text reveals the many psychological and psychoanalytical terms increasingly populating his work over time. Now, case of fitting in within class, race and educational attainment as opposed to parental expectations of schools and neighborhoods. Now, we in the paper by Diane Ray, we talk about different people growing up in different neighborhoods, going to different schools, etc. Now, both class tales reveal the ways in which the provocation of anxiety and fear at both individual and collective levels can result in a splitting between good and bad, us and them, in new and fam unfamiliar fields so as we talk about people from different uh, different sort of uh, habituses it is very easy to draw lines of good and bad and to uh, distinguish these people from different sort of habituses so it is crucial that we make sure that we try to make a form of connection and be more in intertwined instead of having anxiety and fear which result in more bad and us versus them narratives what became what becomes evident is that habitus while highly adaptive and able to develop a feel for the game in new fields is also liable to repression again just to uh, add to this when people from different habituses don't co coexist it is also the cause for more repression sublimation and defense responses as a result of pressures within these fields it drives people against one another when different sort of aspects from their habitus are unable to coexist with one another both classes both class tales show that living class 
that living class in a deeply unequal society like the UK is a powerfully defended and defensive experience. It's a defensive experience for people who have a habitus which is uh, above in the social class and it is more struggling towards the bottom. We uncover projections and rep repressions when we focus analytically on class habitus. It is the stuff of shame, fear, anxiety, arrogance, denial, guilt, and huge ambivalences. This is in terms of people who are struggling within the lower class and they're trying to get academic uh, success and trying to go above the social ladder. So the sort of shame, fear, anxiety, and arrogance they feel in the different neighborhoods that they go to and in different climates from classrooms to outside class to different sort of spheres of life. That is what the reading is talking about. A true sociogenesis of the dispositions that constitute the habitus should be concerned with understanding how the social order collects, channels, reinforces or counteracts psychological processes. So a uh, true sociogenesis of the basically what this says is that in order to understand how social uh, order is made and remade, shaped and reshaped, we need to understand it holistically, especially from a psychological perspective as well. Depending on whether there is homology, redundancy and reinforcement between the two systems or to the contrary, contradiction and tension. Over here, Bourdieu talks about that we need to understand whether there is any sort of contradiction or it, there is some sort of, uh, there is a lack of tension so that these sort of habituses can work together. Habitus enables a focus on the hidden, embodied and psychosocial injuries of social class that come with living in a deeply unequal society. So the paper that's written by Diane Ray, it focuses a lot on the sort of inequalities that we see in societies, especially in a society like the UK, where you have a lot of class differences and people from a lower class uh, in terms of income, in terms of educational attainment would be having a different habitus and that would create more divisive lines rather than inclusive. Bourdieu uses habitus to reveal how a cultural economy of class is embodied and lived out in individuals' lives, but this is where the author argues that, but I would argue it is also helpful in understanding how a psychic economy of social class, feelings of ambivalence, inferiority and superiority, visceral aversions, recognition and objection is internalized and played out in practices. Depending on where you are on the social uh, ladder, your dispositional habitus is going to give you feelings of inferiority or superiority. If you are someone who is in the upper middle class, you will feel in superior to someone who is struggling and trying to make it upwards in, this, uh, in regards to social mobility. The concept of habitus enables links between individuals inner emotional worlds and external social and structural processes. It both animates the social and the psychosocial and allows us to better understand how the psyche is formed in and through the social. So just to uh, shed some more light on this, the concept of habitus before I read it, I read it only from a sociological perspective in my course social theory so over here the current course that i'm taking socialization and cultural identity it takes a more holistic approach in terms of talking about your socialization in terms of social psychological and developmental dynamics so over here when we talk about habitus when we take a more holistic approach we are able to better understand different people and their different dispositions in life and how when we take this sort of a holistic approach, we can understand their human emotions, their psyche, how they go about processing the world that they live in, and how can we be both, you know, uh, better helpful towards them, and how we can try to overcome these inequalities that are so prevalent in across societies. 
but at the same time developing understandings of habitus to include psychic responses and the emotional underworld of individuals both extends and enriches the concept this is a brilliant addition by the author over here who focuses on trying to add the psychic responses and the emotional underworld basically if you just look at the concept of habitus from a social perspective you see a person you see human beings from a macro lens but once we add the psychological aspect we're looking at it from a micro lens and trying to understand the individual interactions people have be there it's uh, whether you're studying students in schools or their parents who are already adults and navigating life from a different habitus it allows us to expand our understanding of how the past is played out in the present for individuals i really love this line because it shows how your your habitus your understanding of the world how you grew up your developmental years over here you have uh, theorists such as piaget and de developmental psychologists bandura as well who see that the concept of monkey see monkey do kids emulate what they see and they in turn internalize it without realizing uh, what it is really like if you tell kids not to do something but you're seen doing the same thing then they're not going to take you seriously but if you actually actively show them the behavior that you want to do then they're going to be more likely to understand and more likely to follow it so with regards to these kind of concepts we see that the past indeed does play in the uh, present and in the future and other than that it uh, psychological allows us to better understand how the psyche is formed yep i've covered this already yeah if i'm my bad i finally found the slide that i was working on which is actually a, a form of this book and other than understanding the past and the present but also to get a better grasp of the degree of ease and or discomfort in which people respond to and internalize the wider social world the notion of adding a psychological lens to the concept of habitus indeed makes it so much more holistic and so much more open ended in terms of getting a better understanding of how people go about both being we if we take the notion of tabula rasa man being born as a blank slate and then we see how their society shapes them their culture shapes them religion so society educational environment all of them shape them and their dispositions but when other than just looking at it from a sociological lens when we look at these individuals from their psychological lens as well and how their day to day interactions shape them it allows us to better understand them better understand society as a whole uh, even from a bird bird eye view and in conclusion thus we can expand the notion of habitus from a merely sociological lens to that of also a psychological lens to make it more inclusive and holistic in terms of understanding individuals and the factors that shape them and thank you for watching don't forget to leave a like and comment and i guess this was a long lecture because as you guys can see it's already night time I hope you guys learned something about the concept of habitus and the psychosocial lens and you guys are free to comment any questions that you have bye